Hello, welcome back for lesson 4.2. <clears throat> so 4.1 was all about where two lines intersect if they intersect at all, right? And there were um, three options. One was if they intersect at one point exactly. The other was if they were inconsistent, meaning they never touch each other, so they're parallel. And the third was um, if they're dependent, meaning they're actually basically overlapping and becoming the same line. So now 4.2 is we're going to talk about a system of linear equations in three variables, such as this example here, 2x plus y minus 3z equals 6. Um, and it actually becomes more, uh, I think, understandable when we actually put it in a context of some real life situations, which we'll do in the next lesson. Um, but we talk about a solution set, which we've done before. A solution set is uh, the solution set of, for a system of three linear equations is three variables is a set of ordered triples that satisfy all three equations. So an X, Y, and Z that make all three equations true. Um, so let's say we have this system here. Here are three equations, one, two, and three. I'm going to call them row one, row two, and row three as I make choices. So we want to be able to solve for x, y, and z. So there's different ways that you can proceed. But um, the main idea is to take two different pairs of equations and eliminate the same variable from each pair. Um, they're going to begin here by adding row one and row two, because when they do, plus y, minus y add to zero. So down here, you can see that they added row one and row two, and they created row four, which is now an equation in two variables. Then on the next page, you can see that they also had to eliminate y. And so they chose to do row two, but they doubled it. So they doubled row two from page one here, and then they added it to row three so that y would again eliminate. So now they have another equation, row five, in x and z as well. So they're going to take row four and twice of row five so that they can eliminate z. And this goes back to what we did in 4.1. And now you have 13x equals 13 and x equals 1. So you're eliminating one variable, creating two new equations. And then those two variables two equations, you're going to eliminate a second variable. Um, once here we solve for x equals one, we can substitute x equals one back into equation four or five, but we chose to do four. So three times one plus two z equals nine. So subtracting three from both sides, you get two z equals six um, and z equals three. And now you have x equals one from above, z equals three from above, and you can sub um, substitute that back into either of the original equations. They chose to do equation one. So they got one plus y plus three equals six. Y plus four equals six. Subtracting four, you get y equals two. So this solution set is one, two, and three. So let's do uh, problem number one in the practice questions to kind of get us started. And then we're gonna look at what are the possible outcomes here for all of these. Okay, so this is my um, problem number one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can easily eliminate one of the variables first. So this is row one, row two, and row three. And it looks like I can add row one and row two and eliminate y, and then I can, add row one and row three and also eliminate y. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to add row one and row two. And when I do, I get two x, the y's cancel, I get plus three z's equals five. And this is my new row four that I'm going to use. Okay. Um, and then I'm also going to 
eliminate y. So I'm, I'm going to just write up here, I'm choosing to eliminate y. That's my choice. So I'm going to do row one again, x plus y plus z equals four. And I'm going to do row three. So this was row one and row two. And now this is row one and row three. So x minus y minus three z equals a negative four. So when I add these again, y eliminates, which was the goal. I get two x z minus three is a negative two z and those add to zero. And this is my row five. So now from row four and row five, okay, I'm gonna rewrite them. So two x plus, I should have two equations and two variables and I do. I eliminated a y from both of, um, from up here. So now I have two equations in x and z. So because my x's are both have a coefficient of two, I can just make one of them negative and then I can eliminate x. So I'm gonna eliminate x. And instead of rewriting the whole thing, I'm just gonna take the opposite of row two, or I'm sorry, this is row four and row five. So this is row four, and then I'm gonna take the opposite, the negative of row five. So this is a negative two X plus two Z and then a negative zero. So that doesn't matter. So when I add them, my X is add to zero and I get five Z equals five dividing by five Z equals one. This is exciting. So then then z equals one into either row four or row five. Either one where you just have z and x, it's up to you. But I'm gonna use row four just for fun. So two times x plus three times one, z is one equals five. So two X equals two when I subtract three. So X also equals one. Okay. So now, put X equal to one, Z equal to one into any of the original three, row one, row two, or row three. This is an or, okay? I'm gonna do row one. So X is one plus, we don't know why, plus Z is one equals four. So Y plus two equals four. So Y equals two. So my solution is going to be, I'm just gonna write that over here, solution is I always do X comma Y comma Z and mine is one, Y is two and Z is one. So it's one, two, one. And you can always check and I want you to be checking so that you're showing me that it works. So because I used row one to find Y, I'm gonna check my answer into row two. I'm gonna use a different one. In case I made a mistake, I'm gonna use a different one to check it. So if X is one minus Y, Y is two, plus two times one for Z equals one. Remember, I'm using your original equation up here for row two, X minus Y plus two Z. X minus one plus two Z. Okay, so one minus two plus two equals one, and the twos cancel and one equals one, so I'm correct. So my solution is correct. Yay. <clears throat> okay, how about we do uh, 
Um, number four. Um, how about we do number five? Number five here, we have X plus two Y plus Z equals three, two X minus Y plus two Z equals six, three X plus Y minus Z equals five. <clears throat> Row one, row two, row three. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose to eliminate y because I can see that row two and row three easily eliminate y and I can modify row one. So I'm going to do row one and row, this is a mistake up here. Um, so I'm going to eliminate in you can choose whatever letter you want to eliminate, whatever you see the easiest to do. I'm going to choose to eliminate Y. So row one is X plus two Y plus Z equals three. And that means I'm going to do two times row two. So I get four X minus two Y minus, or sorry, plus four Z and multiplying everything by two equals 12. And I'm gonna add, so five X, my Y's cancel plus five Z equals 15. That's my row four. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna rewrite my row four over down here because I'm gonna use that next. That's my row four. And then I'm going to eliminate y again with row two and row three. And I don't have to modify them at all because when you add them, they y eliminates already. So 2x minus y plus 2z equals 6. 3x plus y minus z equals 5. Yep, the y's eliminate. So 5x minus z equals 11. That's my row five. Okay, that's row five. <clears throat> so I can see that my x's already have the same coefficient. So I'm going to, to take right here, the negative of row five. So this would be the negative, positive, and negative is all that does so that my x is add to zero. So I'm going to eliminate x. And then I get 6z equals 4. I'm going to make sure I did this right. Oh, you know what? When I did row five over here, it's 2z minus z. That should be a plus z. So this should have been a minus. It was a plus, and we're going to take the negative. So it should be a minus. So this should be 4z. OK. <clears throat> so now when I divide by 4, I get 1. They won't always work out to be an integer. It's just that didn't seem right. I knew I missed this negative over here. OK. Um, so now that z equals one, I'm going to put um, back into row four. So five x plus five times one equals 15 and solve for x. So I'm going to subtract five from both sides. I get 10 x equals two. <clears throat> So now into row one, x is two plus two y plus z, which is one equals three. This is one. Okay, so two y plus three equals three. 
We can't three, we get two y equals zero. Divide by two, we get y equals zero. So my solution on this one is x is two, y is zero, and, and z is one. And I'm gonna check that into row two. I'm gonna check in row two. So row two is two times x minus y, which is zero, plus two times z, and that needs to be six. So four minus zero plus two equals six equals six. Yep. <clears throat> Yay. It worked out. So the solution is two, zero, and one. Okay, let's find another one, number nine. Okay, so go ahead and take a minute and write down number nine. <clears throat> so we can choose whatever we want to eliminate. I'm going to eliminate X this time. Just for fun. So to do that, if I use row one and row two first, they're already opposite signs. So I just need to multiply row one by a two. So two times row one. So a negative two X plus eight Y minus six Z equals four. And then row two. So 2x minus 8y plus 6z equals 1. So when I do that, yep, my x is eliminate. Uh oh, my y is eliminate. Uh oh, my z is eliminate. And I get nothing equals 5, but that can't be. Uh oh. It looks like they're those two lines don't can't we can't eliminate that those two lines don't equal. Let's try doing row two and row three. Um, I'm going to try to eliminate y. So I'm going to say I'm going to multiply. I'm going to keep row two. So 2x minus 8y plus 6z equals 1. And then row 3, I'm going to multiply by a negative 8 to make this a positive 8y. So a negative 8 row 3. So 24 a negative 24x, a positive 8y, a negative 8z equals 0. <clears throat> Okay, so we get a negative 22x. The y's do in fact eliminate. We get a negative 2z equals 1. I can eliminate the y's. So I'm going to try to eliminate the y's up here, but I think if I eliminate the y's up here, <clears throat> it you can see this is the problem. Is row one and row two, the x's are double. The x's are double, the, the y's are double, and the z's are double. So we are going to have an inconsistent system um, because those lines are parallel. So there's no solution. OK. Before we do another one, let's go and look at all of the possibilities that could come out of this. So if you turn in your book to page 339, um, it goes over there are four possibilities that we could possibly have here. And they are the first is um, case one. Case one, when we graph these um, lines in three equations, we're essentially creating what's called a plane. And it's a, a plane means that you've got 
an X and a Y and a Z going and they create this whole space, not just a line, but a whole, like a piece of paper, a flat, this is called a plane. Um, and case one is the three planes have exactly one point in common. In, in this case, we get one solution to our system. And that's what we had for the first two problems we did today. Case number two is the three planes have no points in common because they are all parallel to one another. The system they represent is inconsistent system. Okay. Let's look at case four for just a minute. Case four says two of the planes are parallel. The third plane intersects each of the parallel lines. In this case, the three planes have no points in common. There is no solution to the system. It is an inconsistent system. This is what we had just now in problem number nine, because we can see that row one and row two, row two is a multiple of row one. And so they're gonna be parallel to each other. Um, but they're not a multiple of row three. So row, row one and row two are parallel to each other, but they both intersect row three. So it's still an inconsistent system. Then there is case three right here. The three planes intersect in a line. Any point on the line is a solution to the system of equations represented by the plane. So there is an infinite number of solutions to the system. There, this is an example of a dependent system. Okay. Um, Um, okay, okay. So, how about we look at number 13? Maybe another one for practice here. So take a minute and jot this down here. So number 13, um, I'm going to eliminate Y because row two and row three are already multiple. So I'm gonna start with row one and row two. So I can do two times row one. So I have four X minus two Y minus six Z equals two. And I'm gonna keep row two, which is X plus 2y plus 4z equals 3. My y's do in fact eliminate 5x minus 2z equals 5. That's my row 4. So I'm going to write my row 4 down here. 5x minus two z equals five <clears throat> and then i have to eliminate y again so i'm going to use row two and row three because they add easily to zero so row two and row three is x plus two y plus four z equals three four x minus two y minus six z equals two that adds to zero, so we get 5x minus 2z equals 5. 5x minus 2z equals 5 is my row 5. Uh-oh. They eliminated to the same. There's no unique solution. Darn it, they're all mul they're multiples again, right? They these add to zero. If we take the negative of row five, we get negative plus negative. Um, and these two, uh, are, they add to zero. But, um, That's because we eliminated y. <clears throat> so we're not going to have a unique solution here either. 
Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, let's try another one. How about number 17? Okay, well, 17, we've got row one, row two, row three. <clears throat> so I'm going to eliminate Z because row one already has Z eliminated. So I can use row one down here, X plus Y equals nine. And then I'm going to add row two, which is Y plus Z equals seven to row three, which is X minus Z equals two. So we get X plus Y, those cancel equals nine. X plus Y equals nine. Oh, geez, this is my row four. And if we take the opposite of row four, we get negative, 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 and these all add to zero again. Oh, uh, shoot. So that was eliminating Z. What if we eliminated um, Y? So if we add row one, X plus Y equals nine to a negative of row two, we get negative, not anything for X, but we get, a negative y minus z equals minus seven. This is nothing there. Let's use that. So those cancel. We get x minus z equals two. Back in the row four. Let's see. X minus z equals two. And then we already have um, oh, row three is already x minus z equals two. And if we take the negative, we get negative, positive, negative, and again, they all add to zero. So, it's gonna be another inconsistent for 17. So no unique solution, no unique, solution. Um, so that's going to be case three, where they share a line in common, there's no unique solution. Um, meaning there's no particular point where they um, cross. So let's look at number You look at it here. So 33 says, if we're talking about movie licensing, assume that licensing fees for movies are the same over an entire month, but depend on the genre. So rated G or PG or rated R. If last month the Crest Theater spent $4,200 to license 10 G rated, eight PG rated, and four R rated movies, the Apollo Theater spent $4,400 to license five G rated, six PG rated, eight R rated movies, and the Schubert Theater spent $4,700 to license one G rated, four PG rated, but 12 R rated. Then the system of equations used to find these licensing costs are here. So it's the total cost that they spent on the licensing, and then G, P, and R are um, 
how much each of those licenses cost. So the G-rated movies may cost more or less than the P-rated, which may cost more or less than the R-rated. So we want to find out what those are. So we've got 10 G plus 8 P plus 4 R equals 4,200. 5 G G plus 6 P plus 8 R 4 and 4,700. Okay. So. I am going to eliminate R first is my goal. And to do that, I am going to multiply row one by a negative two so that these add to be zero. So a negative two times row one. So it's going to be a negative 20 G minus 16 P minus 8 R equals a negative four or 8,400. And then row two is gonna stay the same. So we get a negative 15 G minus 10 P, the R's cancel and we get a negative 4,000. This is my new row four. And I'm gonna use that in just a minute. I have to get my row five first. Okay, um, so I have to eliminate R again. So I'm gonna choose row one and row three and I'm gonna multiply row one this time by negative three to get to a negative 12. So a negative three times row one is a negative 30. G minus 24 P minus 12 R equals a negative 12, 600. And then row three is G plus four P plus 12 R equals 4,700. So this is a negative 29 G minus 20 P, those cancel equals a negative 7,900 is row five. So here is row four. Here is row five and it looks like if I multiply row four by a negative two, we can eliminate P. So a negative two times row four. So it'll be a positive 30 G plus 20 P equals 8,000. And then row five is a negative 29G minus 20P equals a negative 7,900. We get one G, the P's cancel. And so G equals 100. So it looks like the G movies have a license fee of 100, but we'll see. So I'm gonna put G equals 102 row four. So minus 15 times 100 minus 10 P equals a negative 4,000, negative 1,500. So if I add 1,500 to both sides, negative, make sure you're using your calculator with all these large numbers and negatives. So a negative 10 P equals a negative 2,500 divided by negative 10 
oops, is uh, P is 250. Okay, so I'm going to put them all back into row one. So 10 times G, which is 100, plus 8 times P, which is 250 plus four R's equals 4,200. We're going to solve for R. So we have a thousand plus should be 2,000 plus four R equals 4,200. So 3,000 plus 4R equals 4,200. So 4,200 minus 3,000 is 1,200. I'm going to subtract 3,000 from both sides. Dividing by 4 equals 300. <clears throat> so it looks like the rated G movies cost $100 for their licensing fees. The P movies cost, the PG movies cost 250, and the rated R movies cost 300 for their licensees fees. And that's what a real life scenario looks like. So catch me back for 4.3 because 4.3 is going to be all about applications. They're all real life scenarios. And so um, hopefully that kind of will put 4.1 and 4.2 into perspective. And I will see you back then.